Um, or if you fall over, you want you're to... You're on. I have, <laughs> I have not fallen yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you do want to use that, though, I need I, you closer to the... I will use that, I'm gonna, but can, you're going to... I'm going to move over. I want you're you to out of... somehow point it to me so that I... Or I'll just tell you to change slides. Yeah, that's Is fine. Is that the deal? That works right, fine. So I just want to get out of here. Let me know when we got the uh, slides up. Coochie. More? More? There you go. How's that's that? cool. Okay? All right. Tell me when and I'll introduce myself. You're on. Okay, so on. my name's Randy Sablick. Some of you know me. We have a lot of new people. You don't know me. Uh, I don't really belong here um, because I am not a classical networking person. I came from the aerospace and technology industry. I've been an executive almost all my life. Um, I start, when I came down here, I had spent 30 years in Massachusetts. Knew everybody. Everybody knew me. When I retired from my last position as a CEO, I decided to consult because, hey, 30 years, I knew everybody, they knew me, and then, for personal reasons, we moved down here to be closer to my son, and I woke up one morning and decided, I don't know anybody except my son and the neighbor across the street. So it was really kind of interesting, and I started coming to networking groups. I've since realized that networking groups, typically like this, are really not uh, the place where I can find opportunities, but I've stayed with this group because I like everybody and I like Dave and I like Jenna and I like Mark um, and it's really just a great a great group so this is my social outlet because when you're used to managing people and being around a lot of people all day long and then you're sitting and you're working out of your house th that's really boring so so that's my story and I'm sticking to it so what I'm going to talk to you today is our proposals now I've given a presentation maybe six seven months ago about proposals so it was kind of dry uh, and it was really not applicable to a lot of the things that people like yourselves do. But what I've done today is what I've learned in doing proposals and in chasing new business, even in the defense industry, which is very different than getting tchotchke, this right. is my, my tchotchke, my badge that she did, uh, or, or stream energy or a realtor, it's very much different. But there's a lot of things that are very much the same in terms of the relationship with the customer and how do you get to understand what the customer really wants. So when you provide them with the product or service, you're really providing them with what they need and with what they want. And a proposal in its simplistic form, and I gave everyone a one-page sample of what I will talk about at the end of the presentation. I believe that it, with some very limited exceptions, giving a potential client or a client an actual written document that conveys your full understanding of what they need and their full understanding of what you're offering, if there are any conditions, and the price are extremely important. Is that better? Am I drifting? Yeah, yeah. I was drifting, okay? So with that, uh, so when is it appropriate to provide a proposal and how do we do it? So go ahead. So, first of all, not every engagement leads to a sale. Mm -hmm. You know that. I don't know what the, your, your ratio is, but you meet a lot of people. You gotta kiss a lot of frogs before you find a prince, right? So not everyone leads to a sale. It typically takes multiple calls or visits to qualify and then to close. I mean, sometimes the qualification process itself is you don't just walk in and say, hi, I'm Randy Sedwick, would you like to do some business with me? I'm a consultant. That doesn't work, or at least it hasn't yet. All right. Maybe when you get really known and everybody knows that she's the tchotchke lady and you want a badge or you want some giveaways, there's no introduction necessary. You just go talk to her, you tell her what she needs, she makes sure she understands, and voila, it miraculously appears. But when you go and you talk to somebody, don't let your enthusiasm, your need to sell, have you lose the sale. What do I mean by that? Next slide. So, here are three objections that a client can offer you uh, and, and what you should do about it. One is, how, how much is it going to cost? I mean, how many times have you heard that? It really is a signal. It's a buying signal or a lack of buying signal. What they're really looking to do is get rid of you. Because if you answer the question, how much is it going to cost, what are they going to tell you? Too much. Too much. Exactly. Even if it's not too much, because they're not ready to buy. So. It's an opportunity for you to say to them something along the lines of, are we clear on, am I clear on all of your requirements? You want a badge, what kind of badge? What is it that you want it to say? How many do you want? What kind of colors do you want? All of those kinds of things. If they say, let me think about it, that's, that's a stalling tactic, right? That means either they're not willing to make a decision, they're not ready to make a decision, or you haven't provided enough information for them 
to really make a decision. So it's an opportunity for you to say, is there something that you're unclear about? You're asking them a question. You're furthering the discussion. You're giving an opportunity for some further dialogue between the two of you. And then the last one is the real put-off. Oh, send me a proposal. And what's going to happen when you send them the proposal? They're not going to open it. They're going to throw it in the trash can. They're going to ignore it. Okay, you can say, great, but I have a few questions. Next slide. So here are some of the questions that you can ask at any point in, those, in that process, but certainly when they say, okay, send me a proposal. Let's first ensure that I, that I fully understand your needs. Go back and restate what you think it is that they're looking for, or what kind of insurance do you really want? You said you wanted life, but do you really need property insurance? Do, do you, what if, are you fully covered with your health insurance? You know, things are changing. Let's make sure that you're not selling. You're asking questions to find out what their needs are. Do you have a budget in mind for this project? How much do you want to spend for your tchotchkes? How much do you think insurance is gonna cost you? You want to find out where their head is at in terms of their budget requirements and then you're going to know in your head well what else do I have to do in order to convince them that it's right because what they expect to pay and what it's probably going to cost them may be at odds with each other and when you know when they say how much they want to pay is that money in your budget is it in your current budget oh no well it's really not in this year I was thinking about buying my tchotchkes next year after I get my income taxes back that's an opportunity for you to say, well, you know, I'm running a sale right now, year-end sale, trying to get my inventory down, working with my supplier. I can give you some really good deals. If you if you really decided you need it, sorry for picking on you. No, I love it. If you really decide that you need it, you know, there's an opportunity to save some money, and then because this is a business expense, it's tax deductible if you buy it this year. Have I met the benefits that you deserve? And we didn't talk about benefits, we just talked about needs. Well. The need is just, oh, I want, I want a bench. Why? Why do I want tchotchkes? Why do I want giveaways? They perceive that there's a benefit by having those. They just don't want to show up at a meeting and just randomly hang out like I did, hand out my brochure and the thing, but that was because I want to make sure I didn't have to do it during the meeting. But what are the benefits of what it is that you offer? Because if you don't understand the benefits, and you're going to see that in a minute when we talk about the proposal, if you're not meeting the benefits that they want, then they're not benefits at all. They're just selling features, and features without benefits are no good. Okay? And what's their decision-making criteria? Right? What is it that they have in their mind that they're going to say yay or nay about that? So you want to ask some clarifying questions. Next slide, please. So we need some time to craft a response. But not like these. You see that one in the top left? I, had, I, I wanted to put some sod in. I rent, but, but the lawn was dead, and I wanted to put some sod in. So the first guy that was recommended through next door, he showed up, a very nice guy, and I said, okay, could you give me a quote? He went out to his car, he tore off a piece of paper from something, and he wrote $400, and, and that's it, and signed it in a totally illegible, and he handed it to me, and I just looked at him, and I said, yeah, okay, fine. That, that's, that's not a proposal. Okay, first of all, it did not reflect well on him. Second of all, I had no idea what the conditions were, what kind of grass, how many square feet. He didn't measure, he didn't do anything. He just gave me a number, totally useless. If you're an engineer, you're gonna give them a proposal and you're gonna give them equations and drawings and quotes and all kinds of stuff, too complicated. So that's not a good proposal either. And then that, just a note from your mother is really not a good proposal, all right? And then if you use my sons told me, because when we went through the first vision challenge, I used a lot of stock graphics. And I thought they were really cute. And I showed them to both of my sons, and they just went, eh. <laughs> Using stock graphics is passe. It, amongst all of us, it's fine. But in a professional document, go, go get some professional graphics. Professional graphics doesn't mean you have to pay someone to make one for you, but go to some stock photo sites and get something that really stands out and gives you the quality. And you certainly don't want to tell them, wow, if you go with me, the sky's the limit and, and no support to that. Next slide. So what we want is a well thought out and professional response. Even if it's a one piece of one page document or a 10 page document, you want to be proud of what you left on their desk before the day is over. Next slide. 
So here are the key elements of a winning proposal. To the degree necessary by your unique business requirements. Not everybody has to do this, but I've learned over the years, whether it's in your sales presentation or your firm document, you want to have an executive summary. What's an executive summary? It's something that either they or their boss or their partner could look at and it clearly tells them, I understand your requirement, not by saying, I, un I fully understand your requirements and I'm going to provide you the winning solution. Eh. But it, it gives them, in a very short, concise way, I understand your requirements, let me restate them, here's what they are, here's what I'm offering, here are the benefits of that, read more later. Okay? Executive summary. An introduction, restate the client's needs and requirements. So you have an opportunity, you'll see later, to go back and talk to them about that. Because if they don't accept your proposal, you could go back and say, well, what was it that I got wrong? Summarize how you meet or exceed them and give examples. What you need is just like what I sold to XYZ company and blah, 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 here's, here's why it worked for them. And then summarize the why us. This is your opportunity for you to sell. Why? Why buy tchotchkes for me? Because I've been around for X number of years, because I buy from only the best vendors. Go look at my LinkedIn or my website, see all the testimonials from the happy customers. And what about the unhappy customers? I don't have any unhappy customers because if they're unhappy, I make them happy, okay? What are the benefits and advantages of your solution and your services? What are the benefits and the advantages of me doing business with you, buying tickets to your games, being a sponsor, having a banner, sponsoring kids night out on the field? What are the benefits of that? Well, we have 10,000 people who come to our games. Your name will be on our programs, all of those kinds of things, okay? Benefits and advantages to your solution or services only benefits their needs, to their needs. So what I just use as an example may be no good for me, because if I don't have a giant client base, what's you know 10,000 people coming to the game, putting our Sable Consultants logo up on the billboard is really gonna mean nothing to anybody. Okay? So you've got to make sure that you tie benefits to their needs. Support all the benefits with claims. I've talked about that already. Make sure when you say your benefit is you're going to save money, make sure you give them an example and make sure you give them a case that you can feel with confidence, you have permission, that you can say, hey, well, just like I did with XYZ Company, um, I saved them some money. And the same with all of the advantages, right? You want to be able to have advantages that are not just advantages. Oh, well, you can jump higher and farther if you take my, you know, take my drink. Is that an advantage to them as a business? No, the advantage has to apply to their business. Conditions of sale or terms, terms and conditions. You may have terms and conditions in your business, in the insurance business, okay? Do you ever read an insurance policy? Okay, those are all the terms and conditions. When you'll get paid, when you won't get paid. In your business, you may have a no returns policy, or in your case, uh, you know, if you don't like it, I will work with you and make you like it. So you may not have to put them down, but sometimes just a short little thing that just says, you know, 100% satisfaction guaranteed, and we really stick behind it. That's good enough. Price and validity. You want to make sure that they clearly understand your price. Is it per? Is it? Is there a setup fee? Is it a one-time charge? Uh, what's the per? If there's a discount, if you buy more, how quickly do I want to be paid? And oh, by the way, if you don't make up your mind in 30 seconds, the price is going to go up. So you want them to know that. And then a closing. And we'll talk in a second about the difference between an executive summary and a closing, and they're similar, and it depends on interpretations, because I'm going to show you an outline. Next slide. How am I doing on time? Good time. Good. Ensure you've understood their true needs. So, so again, you ask them in the meeting, have I verified what's important to you? Did I get that clear? You know, I just had a conversation on the phone, I'm gonna help somebody sell some sponsorships and I wanted to make sure that I was clear as to what are the advantages of them sponsoring this organization. Is there a way to quantify how you meet, meet those, those things that are important to them? Okay. There may not be a way to quantify it, but think about it for a minute, and if there is, do it, okay? Can you provide proof you've done it before? Well, I mean, to me, I, my proof is, I've been in industry for over 40 years. I won't say how many over 40, because then you know how old I am. 
but, but a long time, and I've had a very successful career. And so I have lots of proof of things that I've done. And then I've done some consulting since then, since I retired. And I can give examples of the money that I've saved people or the proposals that they've won. And then can you offer any guarantees? Linda has a guarantee. If you don't like it, I'll do it again. And uh, maybe there's an implication you can't do that a hundred times because if after the first time they don't like it, she's probably going to have a conversation with them. Well, what did I do wrong? What did I miss? Do you not like the color, the layout, the font size, the placement? What did I fail to clarify from you back up earlier that I really understand your requirements? Next slide. So let's talk about formalizing the proposal. Next. Okay, so there's lots of ways we can do that. Simple one page. Don't um, don't overcomplicate. Just because I gave you a handout doesn't mean you have to use it, all right? But putting something in writing to me is really important. If a guy comes to me and he gives me something in writing that's totally illegible and does not reflect the quality of his work, or maybe it did, that says something to me. So you want to be able to give them something clear and simple appropriate to the kind of business that you have, okay? There's a template format, and the handout that you have is a template format. It has the ability for them to clearly see the key points, to distribute parts to the relevant viewers so that they can say, well, okay, well, the legal department needs to see these terms and conditions because they're a little different than when we buy services from other people. They're not necessarily bad, but I just want to make sure that my legal people buy off with. Same thing with the terms and conditions, okay? Number three, pricing details, if appropriate, something for the accountant. You want to be able to tear it off, and if it's a business and they have an accountant, they want the accountant to say, why? Well, they want to make sure I got budget for it. Oh, geez, we didn't put this in our budget this year. You can't sign for this. Well, you could sign for it if you could get them to pay January 2nd, see if that'll work with that, all right? And then a signature page. Why is the signature page important? <laughs> because well the signature page pre-signed by you why is that important because you're kind of guaranteeing what you're saying right because you're saying I'm willing to put my name on this my RJ Sablik on it which means I support everything that I just wrote are you willing to sign it too so if they sign it then you walk away with a commitment most people don't take writing their name on a piece of paper a very bit poor commitment People tend to honor when they sign something. Okay. Next slide. And so you'll see the format. So I've given you in this document, let's just pull that up, pretty much the same stuff that it that has the introduction, what's the problem, how you solve it, what's the cost and schedule, terms and conditions, and executive summary and introduction are interchangeable. I grew up where the executive summary was always separate and it was first. And who was it designed for? The executives, exactly. Because the executives, if, if it's a bigger company, the executives typically don't have the time nor the interest to read the entire proposal. But they do want to see the things that we just talked about. How much is it? Well, it usually doesn't have the price, but do they understand my needs? Do they understand my problem? Have they done this before? Uh, all of those kinds of things. So, then you hand deliver it. Don't send it in the mail. Don't, don't just you know throw it at them on a the table in a meeting. You hand deliver it. I'm pleased to submit this proposal for your review and approval. Now, if you could get them to sit down and over lunch and review and approve it right there, that's even better because then you've closed the deal, you've saved an extra step. But it's important because it's you. You represent your business or the business that you're working for. And they want to know that you're behind what you're selling. And then if, if you see, you detect a little bit of, you can, you can see the look on their face. You're a little perplexed. Maybe it's the price. Maybe it's the terms. Maybe you missed something. You say, I believe I covered everything you needed. N'est-ce pas? You know, did I? You know, did, what did I miss? All right? And then, would you be able to sign this today? Ask for the order. And, and asking for the order prematurely, before you've done these appropriate things for your business, is a sure way for them to say what? No, I need to think about it. Give me some more time, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide. So in summary, any kind of a written, nicely done, formal document is the professional way to present your business to your prospective client. 
Okay? It clarifies that you understand their needs. It supports your reasons and benefits to them. It clearly communicates all your assumptions, because you may have to make some assumptions, because maybe they didn't tell you everything. And then as you're going through your production cost or the supplier that you buy your things from, or the rules from the company you, you're gonna sell, you're gonna get the insurance from, you find out, oh my God, there's something here that we didn't talk about. So when you clarify the assumptions, it communicates that to them and they go, oh, wait a minute, um, that could be a problem. And then you have, so okay, when we need to talk about that. Your price is clearly stated. There's no question. Here's how much I charge for this. If there are any unique terms, you get the opportunity to elaborate on, to talk to them about it. Okay? And then your signature is your bond. Okay? Any questions on that? Okay, next slide. So, I'm going to, like, like all good presenters that Dave has hired to bring in here, okay, I am available to help any of you design a format. And for members of the Richard Saplano or Business Growth Network, I will not charge you a cent. I will sit with you and I'll help you design a simple template that you can use with your business. That's my contact information. And I enjoyed this presentation with you today. Thank you very much. Excuse me? Well, now I'm going to ask for questions. I wanted to end, end the presentation, you know, and then ask, anybody have any questions, anything I didn't cover, or anything unique about your business that says, well, I don't think this would work for me, or are there, are there alternatives? Please. Do you think if, that it's uh, important for all businesses? In other words, would you suggest to a realtor to do that, or um, a loan officer in my case? Well, because first of all, it's not, it's not true your product per se. Well, in both cases, loan officer and realtor, you do have your presentation is the document, the offer, the purchase and sale agreement that you're going to ask them to sign. Right. So you're putting everything in on paper there. So it, it is a substitute for a proposal. It okay. serves a similar purposes. Okay. I mean, you're going to attach the house that they want. It's going to have no how many bedrooms, square feet. Its address is going to have a plot plan. All of those things that are their requirements for that house. And so you're going to go over that with them, and you're going to say, well, this is the house we looked at. Here's here's the pictures of all the different rooms. Here's the square foot. Here's the annual utility cost, etc., etc., etc. Did we miss anything? Do you understand? This is a great deal. And do you understand the market that we're in today that, you know, if we don't close on this soon, I got a lineup of people who really want this house. Same thing, okay? So, so all of this is not necessary, but the elements of all of this are important to every one of us, right? Okay? Yeah. Uh, I Please. know with me, uh, I don't have to be that formal. Correct. Uh, you know, but I do have to think detail to a good extent. Because Correct. Because I have to have people know what I'm selling them, what they get for it, the price that they'll pay for yep. it, and what my terms are. Yep. Uh, you know, and I do that more of an informal way. Yep. Now, but if I were out in the the big grown up world mm -hmm. and you know selling to a Sikorsky aircraft or mm -hmm. GE or somebody like that, uh, you know they have a lot of vendors and I need to. See stand out right. and I need to be explicit with something mm -hmm. very formal like this. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with me, it's a little more casual. And I think, yes, I agree with everything you've said, but I personally think even in a, quote, casual environment, mm -hmm. a very short, even if it's on a, right. on a, you know, three by five card or something that has your logo on it, a place for your signature that says, I will supply you with following name badges with your name and your title on it, quantity 500, price X, signed by Linda. That to me is sufficient. Okay? The other thing though is it can build, like, if you're just sending like, say an order format, that's it, all you've done is submit price. So right. like he mentioned, now they can argue over price, right? Right. Whereas if you send like a little bit more formal of a proposal, even if it's just like, like you said, a one pager, mm -hmm. like it, or an email in your case, mm -hmm where you can explain the value right. before you hit that price. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You're not selling them, you're telling them the value. Like right. A pen is not just a pen mm -hmm. at a bank, 
people walk off with the pens, yep. you know, this is going to solve your pen shortage. Or, um, I mean, these are things I would take time to write, right. but you, you get what I'm saying. Like, right. if you can just a little bit to give some value, get a little testimonial in there, like you mentioned, and then hit that price point, you'll actually increase your sales. Right. Not because you're more formal. Nobody right. wants that formal. Yeah. You're not worried about scope creep. You know, some of the reasons somebody else might do a proposal you don't have, but your sales will increase because you put value in front of a price. Exactly. And see, my biggest competitor is the internet. Yep. And so I can give value to my services, my attention to detail, my customer service, whereas you don't necessarily get that from right. ordering from the internet. Give me an example. I, I, know that too. I got in the you mail. Know that. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I got in the mail two weeks ago mm -hmm. a free pen from right. one of your competitors. Right. And I had my old company, Arlington Associates, uh -huh. all right? So that was number one. I mean, all they had to do was go on LinkedIn and they realized that Arlington Associates doesn't exist anymore. Right. It's our Sabergen Associates. Eh. Yeah. Then I tried to use the pen, guess what? Mm -hmm. Wrote like crap, garbage. <laughs> okay, now when I get stuff from them, don't even open it. Mm -hmm. Just throw it in yeah. the trash, waste the money. Yeah. I always get the pen. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? There's good questions. I actually have a question. I had a proposal due today for a charter school, and it's a doozy of a number. And that's my biggest fear is when I walk this in there, she's going to be sticker shock because I can't get her to set the meeting mm -hmm. with that to say, there's something good. we've got some wiggle room in this, but we did our dream program mm -hmm. and what it would look like with, but we know she's probably going to cut it back just because schools right. a lot of programs with it. So how do I, what do I do to approach her to, She's not going to set the meeting today. Mm -hmm. We're going to drop off the proposal, and I know when she sees it, she's going to go. Yeah. Well, the first thing I wouldn't do is I would refuse to drop the proposal. Mm -hmm. I would hand. I would ask to see her. Say, I, I don't want any time. I just want to. I want to give you the proposal and make sure you got it. The other thing you might want to think about doing is, in your proposal, offer her some alternatives. Offer her an option A, an option B that already anticipates what you just said. If you believe, it's called handling objections. If you believe that that's gonna be an objection, that she said, oh, well, this is, you know, she, this is what she, this is shooting the moon uh, idea, but she knows in her heart of hearts that that's gonna probably come in more than she could afford. You're the expert, you might know, what are the areas that would be, have the least impact on the children and on the school's reputation if we took those out. Are you selling yourself short? Some people would say wait for her to, you know, for her to come back with those objections. You, you have to know your client to decide whether or not what I just suggested is a good idea. It all boils down to knowing your customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think she'd be very appreciative yeah, if right. it came with an alternative yeah. to say, you know, this is another option. We can always go to nice that at a later date. Or something like that. Right. You know, that would be awesome. Or, or, yeah, just say, you know, if there's any, give your business your business card again. Say, you know, if you have any questions, I'm available all weekend to discuss this, and I could get a new proposal back in your hands by Monday if you have any problems. And and the let me think about it so that the client says yep. to me that speaks. I'm shopping around. Right. So you have to absolutely really show your absolutely. the advantages to ordering. For exactly. You. Features and benefits are not enough. Right. You need advantages. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Yes. I don't think I think I rarely actually present my proposal. I send it online. What are your thoughts? Because I use a program, I can put videos in there. Yep. yep. I can put all sorts of different things in there and templatize, which is my yep. big one. Because yep. I spent literally all day on a proposal right. yesterday. Um, which I know may not be a big thing to you because you've done longer ones. <laughs> I've spent months. <laughs> but now Sequestered my next, 7 yeah, by 24. But Ask now my, my wife. next one is faster right. because I built the template and right. then built first. So what do you think about that? Well, there, there are some unique aspects of your business. Your social media business is, an online, is largely, largely, well, it's not just social an, media, but it's largely an online business. Mm -hmm talk to people online, all the rest of it. So it, it would not be atypical, perhaps, to do that. I would look for an opportunity, however, to do it face-to-face. -face. If, if they're in California, oh, yeah. it's not practical. 
but if they're local, it is practical. Mm -hmm. Okay. I uh, to me, sales, business development is a face-to-face -face relationship and benefits-based business. You're gonna buy. You're gonna buy. People are gonna buy from who? People they know, know like, and trust. trust. Exactly. It's not not networking, know, like, and trust. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. And the more you get them to trust you by putting things in paper, committing, mm -hmm. signing for it, documenting it, telling them what the terms are, the more they can trust you. Giving them references builds their trust. And it helps legally too if there's an issue. Absolutely. That everybody understood what was happening. Right. And if you have any. Yeah, if you, if you documented what you're going to provide to them, mm -hmm. and then they decided not to pay you, and they said, well, they made up some stupid excuse that was totally irrelevant. I said, well, that's, that wasn't in the proposal, that wasn't in the terms, of, that wasn't in your requirements. You have some grounds to go after them. You could decide whether you want to do that or not. Okay? All right, All right. very good. Awesome. Thank you. And even fall over once. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>